Hi and welcome back to the workshop. This is the second video in a series on using INCRA's LS Positioner system on a router table to cut corner post dovetails. If you haven't already seen the first video, I recommend you pause this one and take a look now. I'll pop a link up in the corner and I'll put one down in the description notes below. The first video covers off selecting the timber, sizing it and getting the router table set up ready to make the dovetail cuts. In this video we're going to cover off cutting the dovetails, gluing up the corner posts and then finally we'll glue up the box. So with that said, enough of me rabbiting on, let's head over to the router table and get started. After securing the right angle fixture to the router table, I clamp my backing board and tail boards in place and then make the cuts. I'm using cut set A on the MWC scale to make the tailboard cuts and I simply advance to the next number on the scale each time then I lock the sliding rail in place again and make the next cut. Well that's the tailboards complete, now on to the pins. The pins are cut with the board laying flat on the router table so we don't need the right angled fixture this time. We simply pass the board over the router bit using cut set B on the MWC template guide. I think they came out rather well. And that's our first set of cuts complete. And as you can see, we've got some beautiful dovetails and a gorgeous joint. With the pin cuts complete, I can take the pin board across to the table saw and cut it down to size. Now it's time for the first glue up. I'm going to clamp the pin board pieces that I've just cut onto the ends of the tail boards. I spread glue over both the tails and the pins. It takes a little longer, but it's worth it, just to make sure we've got a good solid joint once the glue is dried. As the pin board cuts are slightly thicker than the tail boards, I make sure that the tail boards right in the middle so I've got a little bit of the pin board protruding each side. Then I clamp up using a couple of pieces of scrap just to ensure I get a good even pressure across the joint. Well I'm off for a cup of tea. See you after the glue dries. So I've finished my tea. I'm all rested and our glue's dried, so I'm going to take them out the clamps, like so. Then I'm going to go across to my little belt sander, and I'm going to sand these flat with the surface of the board, and then I'm going to take off any edge that there may be here, being really careful not to alter the width of the board at all. So I'll see you there. I sand the pins level with the face of the tailboards, taking care not to sand the tailboards themselves. I 
Okay, so I've sanded the pin boards back so that they're now nice and flush with the tails. And all I've left to do is to trim the excess off the end so that the piece I'm left with is the same width as the tailboard. Now that our first glue up is complete and the boards are sanded nice and flat, we can move back to the router table and continue with our cuts. We've got three cuts left to make before we can glue our box up. Cut number one is on the back of our new tailboards where we need to cut a slight rabbit in the back to allow for the fact that the back end of the pin cut is going to be curved because of the router bit. So in order to make the uh, rebate cut, we set our fence in line with the widest part of the router bit, so a board will just pass in, in front of it. Then we set our spare sliding scale that we have to zero, not the template guide. Now I'll make a series of passes across the a bit with the tail boards until I've got approximately a 6mm rabbit. With the rabbit cut, I can mount my tail boards back to back on the right angle fixture and make the A cut. And finally, we need to cut our last cut, and for that, we need this little wonderful device that Incra call the Versatile Stop Positioner. Um, so what we need to do is to use the stop, let me move the fence a bit so it makes a little bit more sense. If I go to my first B cut, so when I push the uh, pin board now through the router bit, I want it to stop at the perfect depth so that my tails fit in and don't sink all the way through. So I'm going to use the versatile positioner to ensure I get that right. The manual says to pop the positioner so it's just about level with the edge of the router bit. I hope you can see that. I'll try and zoom in for you. So this can take a couple of attempts to get it at the right depth. So we'll do that now. And then we'll go straight ahead and we'll cut the pins.
So that's our final cut complete. And let's see whether it all comes together. And there we have our corner post dovetails. Well that completes our corner post dovetails by our gluing and clamping which I'll do off camera. I think that's also a good place to end part two. In part three we'll cut the box, glue in top and bottom fit some hinges, a clasp and we'll give it a coat of finish. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you have please hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and tick the little bell if you want a notification when I upload part three. So thanks for watching, see you soon.